everyone and welcome back. Uh, so lately, oh, there's a hair in my eye. Come on. That was inconvenient. It's still there. Okay. So lately I've been watching a few unhauling videos. Um, so usually my stance on hoarding books is that every single book has sentimental value and that is where I get into trouble because I run out of space very quickly and easily. Um, I get sentimental for different reasons. Um, just one, the, the experience and the memory of reading books. So I'll keep it. Um, I'm not, I don't hand out tough love to my books. Um, so I'll be like, oh, you're only a three star read, but I'm still going to keep you because I have a hard time of shifting my thinking of being like, okay, no, I have no use for this book. I will not read it again. It has to go. Or there are so, so, so many unread books on my shelves that I don't have it in me to get rid of a book that I haven't yet read because then the part of my brain that overthinks everything will be like, but what, but what if you kept it and you read it at some point and you liked it? Why don't you keep it? So I hoard books for many different reasons. Uh, majority of the books that I've read that I have on my shelves, I have more or less genuinely enjoyed. So I don't have many books that I could get rid of. But as I said, I've been watching a lot of unhauling videos and it has helped me shift some of my thinking, so I did a little semi-purge. I've got, oh, oh, this one's dirty. I've got these books here. Yeah, I've got these books that's not many that I'm planning to unhaul. Um, so the original idea was because everyone's stuck inside their houses lately, and I've seen so many people put out boxes of books to give away. I'm like, I want to do that, but also I want to build a little free library. I don't have any carpentry skills. I don't have materials. Um, I also live on a generally quiet street. Most of the time, people don't walk down the streets. Lately, when everyone's been out doing their daily exercise, there's been more people walking down the streets. So I'm like, okay, what if I do this then? It was shot down by my family members. So I'm not gonna do that. And when we can leave the house, I'm gonna go on an adventure to drop these off into the little libraries that do exist in my city that I never knew about because I never honestly searched. I just dropped one. I never searched for them. Which sounds dumb because why wouldn't I ever have looked them up before? I think the short of it is they are not within walking distance or driving distance and I couldn't even do public transport to it because like I wouldn't now because that's not exactly the safest thing to do but even on a normal day on a normal week on a normal month in a normal year I was still wouldn't be able to get public transport there unless I was willing to take two trains, two buses, probably a third bus to get to that place. 
doesn't, it's too much effort, <laughs> um, especially when I do have a car. So yes, here are the books, there are six, oh yeah, that's not bad, it's not bad, okay, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with these books. Also, um, today felt like a beret wearing day. So I put it on and then also with the jacket, it looks so extra. I feel like an American teenager who's gone to France for the holidays because their father works there for majority of the year. And I've met some French boy and I'm like, oh, I got to impress him with my hip fashion sense. That's what I feel like. And no, I haven't read Anna and the French Kiss, if that's the book title. I've heard that it's not good, but I've heard that it is good. I don't know. If it was on the shelf and I didn't quite like it, it'd probably be in this unhauling. So, the books. Oh my gosh, I didn't even realise how much I tabbed this. Okay. This one, first up, because it's on the top. Digger, D Digger J. Jones by Richard J. J. Franklin. Um, this isn't terrible. It is enjoyable. It's a nice, cute... Oh, it's not cute, but it's a quick, easy... I think it would be considered middle grade, even though we don't have middle grades in Australia. Uh, middle grade book. Um, it's about the... 1967 referendum we had in Australia to give our indigenous population voting rights. If I'm remembering the book and my history properly. Because when I was in primary school and high school, we didn't get much indigenous history lessons in. It was all about uh, colonialism and the first fleet literally every year when we had our history class and we did Australian history it wasn't a subject by the way for me it when we talked about Australian history it was all about the white history a couple of times in my senior high school days we talked about there was one unit that I took that was about the the negatives of colonialism in Australia which was I hated the teacher, but in hindsight, the, I should have paid attention to class. Anyway, this was a uni read, um, was for an assignment. It was good. It's just not something that I'm going to read again. So it's... It's just better off not being in my possession and passing on to someone else who could potentially enjoy it and then they could potentially pass it on or keep it themselves if they really really liked it. So first up, second up is Beautiful Disaster by Jamie McGuire. I read this in year nine, probably shouldn't have. Um, I think it's considered adult romance but I think this would technically fall in the new adult genre nowadays. I found this in a Kmart and I read the back and I'm like, oh, interesting. It's a romance about college kids. And it starts off with good girl, bad boy. The blurb is so misleading. It is actually blatantly lying. <sighs> I I liked it, but it's still not the greatest, and I'm never ever gonna read it again. Uh, the writing wasn't polished. I don't know, there's just something about when I'm reading, I think I've mentioned this before, but it honestly, it bothers me so much. That when there is a scene, there's characters and props, and if the props aren't all moved consistent, consistently, continuously, 
I don't know, if it were a movie scene and we're looking at the IMDb page for it, or for the movie, and you go down to trivia, it'll have incontinuity in this scene. That's what I notice and I don't know why it bothers me. Mm. Anyway, next. <sighs> <clears throat> Stage Fright by Carol Wilkinson. This is an Australian YA, I'm fairly sure. I need to readjust my sitting. Okay, closer to the camera, but my foot is now not being squashed. Um, yeah, pretty sure it's a young adult YA book, contemporary. I uh, think it's about a new girl who goes to a new school, she doesn't fit in, and then she ends up with a group of delinquents or something, or the outcasts, and they're made to put on a play. And then they're all best friends by the end. That's basically it. I didn't really enjoy it. Um, I was so close to DNFing it, but I didn't know, like, I, I generally don't like not finishing books. I, to this day, I don't think I've actually properly DNF'd a book, like, intentionally. I know I have that whole long video, um, but I never did that on purpose. I never DNF'd any of those books on purpose, it was just how it happened. But if I knew the benefits of DNFing it, I probably would have DNFed that book. So I'm not going to read it again. And I'm just going to let someone else have it. Next book I probably should have DNFed, but I didn't. Um, Sublime by Christina Lauren. Yep. Um, which retrospect spect Hind in hindsight, I'm not even going to try and say the other word, um, because I struggle with adverbs, apparently. Um, the cat is meowing. Um, I'm surprised. In hindsight, I'm surprised because this writing duo is raved about and I don't know if it's because this is one of their earlier books that they just, uh, they didn't, it's just one of their earlier books that, and they haven't really settled into their style yet, or if it's one of their more experimental ones because this is paranormal romance and the other stuff's contemporary, I don't know. <laughs> I really, 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 really did not like the ending. I got to about half, like, I got to part way through the book and I'm like, this is so dumb. I hate the concept. It was good before, but now I hate it. Uh, I promise these books aren't getting damaged when I drop them. But if I was rating my books, jumping back and forth between statements, um, if I was rating things on Goodreads when I did read that, I probably would have given it a one star. <sighs> the next one. I hated, but I had no choice and I had to read it because it was a high school read. I hated this. It was so dumb. <sighs> the YA. Okay, it's Destroying Avalon by Kate McCaffrey. Kate McCaffrey, um, YA contemporary based in Australia, about a new girl moving to a new school who wants to fit in and be popular. And so how she goes about and does that, wait, is she the one being cyber bullied or she's, I think she cyber bullies and she gets it back and she's like, why? And then she does it. I don't know. I, it happened. I read it so long ago for high school. I did not like it at all. I thought it was just so stupid. I, the whole point of us reading it was for cyberbullying awareness and all of that identity bullshit that they try to teach you in high school when smothering individual individualism. 
You can't do isms either, apparently. Not today. Uh, yeah. I hope that was a finished sentence because I forgot where I left it because I couldn't speak. So that one I'm never, ever, ever going to read again. I read it in year nine. Let's see how many years it's been. Year nine. Seven years ago? And if in the seven years that I've held on to this and I've not thought about reading it again once, there's no point keeping it for any more years to see if I do read it again. Because I really am not. So I can just leave. The next one is also a uni read, which I did not mind didn't really like it but it wasn't terrible it was just a very it was just very American and that's something that I can struggle with sometimes because no insult to any individual people just as a collective America seems to think their way of life is universal sometimes uh, and the way that I've found in art forms like uh, writing or television and movies, the way they present the events that's happening, it's like they expect everyone to be like, oh yeah, no, I get that. But no, because it's an American thing and only Americans would understand the situation so sometimes I find it hard to connect. And this one was easy enough because it's middle grade to young adult-ish. It's Rash by Pete Holtman. Hartman. I don't know. Um, so it's a dystopian novel set at the end of this century. Um, where a lot of things have become illegal, so alcohol illegal, football or other violent sports illegal, ownership of gun, chainsaws and or large dogs illegal, body piercings, tattoos illegal, and literally anyone can be arrested for the smallest things in this novel. Uh, so in this, like even kids get arrested, like it doesn't matter who or how old, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they've still got that whole rich buying their way out of bullshit. Anyway, um, this kid, a teenager gets arrested, I'm fairly sure it's for running, um, and then he gets sent to a labor camp as his punishment. And in this labor camp, they're like, like manual labor camp. They make food stuff. I don't know, I, I, it, something about ketchup comes to mind. I, I don't fucking remember. Um, yeah, so kids arrested, sent to the manual labor camp, doing the daily tasks, whatever. But get this, something that's illegal, playing sports, illegal, the guards do. So within these manual labor, la manual labor camps, they pick the strongest and toughest boys to uh, participate in a game of American football and make teams and then guards from different camps put on football games. This whole book was about American football. All of it. I mean, there were themes that we talked about. For it to be a uni uh, read, it had to have themes that we could um, work with instead of it just being about football. Uh, um, it, besides those themes, it was literally just about football. 
on the best of days, I'm not even interested in footy. Like, Australian Football League footy. I have never watched a game in my life of American football. Is it called Gridiron? I'm fairly sure that's what we call it here. I'm just... I'm just really not interested in it. It was... It was so American. There were a couple of funny moments, but again, I'm not going to read it again, so why hold on to it? And those are the books. I'm so tired now. <sighs> so the plan for when we can leave the house again uh, is for me to drive to one of the little libraries and drop it off. But it's not going to be for a very long while. Another four months at the very least. Which I'm fine with, but it just means I still have to keep them somewhere. But just not on my shelves anymore. And that's it. I don't know if I'm going to do any other unhauls. Uh, it's probably going to be at least a year. For me to get through some of the unread books here. And then I can decide if I don't want to keep them anymore. But the ones that I have read... I am keeping for now. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's a little long. It's pretty rambly. My energy is now depleted. But we're at the end now. That's it. Done. If you enjoyed this video or any other of my videos, um, I would greatly appreciate it if you subscribed. Just feel weird saying it, but I felt like I had to. If you like this video specifically, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to give me a compliment, tell me I'm shit, or give me suggestions on books, video ideas, whatnot, the whole lot, please comment down below. Uh, check the description box as well if you feel like it. Um, I do write a semi-story in there every now and then. So I feel like it was worth mentioning that I do pay attention to the description box down below. And I do put links in there. So if you have a fancy and you feel like you want some, some extra information, there's some extra information, not... Not always, but there's some extra information in the description box below. Do that. Um, last order of business. Have a good day. Yep, that's it. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Floppy hand. Okay, I'm gonna... Bye. So tired.